Bienvenue dans l'auditorium virtuel du Pôle des langues et civilisations pour un débat prolongeant votre visionnage du long métrage Landscapes of Resistance euh, réalisé par Martha Popivoda. Sélectionné en compétition par le festival Cinéma du Réel, Paysage de Résistance fait partie des sept films sélectionnés par la Bulac, la Bibliothèque universitaire des langues et civilisations. L'équipe de la Bulac se réjouit d'accueillir aujourd'hui la réalisatrice Martha Popivoda, basée à Berlin, Xavier Bougarel, historien, Dana Nelep, étudiante en cinéma, qui sont donc à mes côtés, ainsi que Valentin Jouel, également étudiant en cinéma, qui interagira à distance. Marta Popivoda est une réalisatrice, artiste vidéo et chercheuse née en Serbie. Son travail s'intéresse aux tensions entre souvenirs et histoire, entre corps collectif et corps individuel, ainsi qu'entre l'idéologie et la vie quotidienne, en se focalisant notamment sur les potentialités antifascistes et féministes du projet socialiste yougoslave. Xavier Bougarel est chargé de recherche au CNRS, spécialiste en histoire sociale de la Seconde Guerre mondiale en Europe du Sud-Est. Valentin Jouel et Dana Nelep sont tous deux étudiants en master cinéma et audiovisuel à l'Université Sorbonne Nouvelle. Nous vous souhaitons un bon débat. Ok, uh, okay. thank you for inviting me and hi to Martha and to Valentin. Uh, hi. Um, I will react uh, first as a, an individual and then as a historian. Uh, as an individual, I, I found your film uh, a very beautiful film with a very sympathetic uh, hero. Um, as a historian, I was um, a little uh, surprised or frustrated because uh, in comparison to your former film uh, about Yugoslavia and ideology moving our collective body, Uh, this new film is completely different and for a historian there is much less material to, to, to use or to, to recognize as such. Uh, that's why I have uh, a lot of questions uh, about, uh, about uh, Sonia in particular. Um, Maybe I, I, I would like to, to ask you first if you could um, explain more chronologically uh, uh, when exactly Sonia went to the partisans, when she was arrested, when she uh, arrived in Auschwitz, because uh, the chronology is not very clear in the film itself. Mm -hmm. Um, Sonia, Sonia became, uh, I mean, she became a communist before the war, uh, and then when the war started, uh, she she uh, actually joined uh, and was invited to organize one of the first units, partisan units, uh, in uh, Serbia and also in former Yugoslavia. Um, I think it was the second um, uh, unit uh, form, formed on the territory of, of Yugoslavia. Uh, but also the, the data we uh, found um, uh, during our research uh, was also not very clear. So, uh, yeah, that's why we say that she is one of the first um, uh, female partisans uh, in Serbia and in Yugoslavia because uh, there are some contradicting information. Definitely she is one of the first. So, um, yeah, she, she became a partisan in... Um, Uh, spring of uh, 1941, as I remember. I was not focused, you know, on the this kind of, uh, like, uh, data. Uh, I was focused on some other things in the film. Um, I'm sure that Anna Vujanovic, who is a co-script writer and researcher and theorist, uh, she, she really took care about all these details, and she also insisted um, uh, that we put the disclaimer at the end of the film explaining the march of that situation because she thought that people will, um, who know history will feel confused uh, about it. Um, so yeah, she became uh, a partisan fighter in 1941 and she uh, uh, already, I think in the I don't know when she was captured uh, exactly. Uh, was it uh, the winter of 41 or 42? 
Uh, and then she actually um, arrived to Auschwitz after other camps, like in Belgrade, there is a there was a Banica camp, um, and um, um, before that she was also um, captured and tortured in some other smaller, uh, um, yeah, um, not camps but uh, you know prisons, um, and then all. all uh, she arrived to Auschwitz in 1943, so quite late. That's why also she survived, because she came there quite late. I mean, I don't know if I answered your question, but... Yes, yes, uh, yes you... Uh, yeah. That's what I, I was interested in. Maybe you can also react. Um, yes, I, I really enjoyed watching the film. Um, I like the fact that it is um, an embodied and very specialized uh, story um, because you not just um, share what uh, Sonia says but also um, you you're very interested in um, other other types of memory for example the the memory of the landscapes and the memory of the of the body and um, this multi-dimensionality of memory um, really interested me. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's definitely, I always say that I'm interested in this tension of memory and history. And um, uh, even the previous film, uh, I mean, I use archive footage uh, exclusively and people often think that this is, you know, uh, something then uh, like true, <laughs> but actually it's very much constructed, like history itself, it's constructed. So the previous film, which is exclusively from archive footage, I always like to say that it's also very personal story and perspective on history of Yugoslavia. Here in this film, in Landscapes of Resistance, we uh, of course have much clearer position of memory, not of history. Um, but, of course, we tried in the film, in the composition of the story, in the dramaturgy, to really, um, fo I mean, to, to follow um, um, a certain chronology. Uh, and it, it is, I mean, in her story, how we compose her story, it's chronological uh, just because also her perspective is uh, very personal and we want it to, uh, for people to be, um, I mean, to be also clear historically. But this was not a pri priority <laughs> in the film. It was, uh, a priority was actually to get uh, um, a very personal um, and very specific perspective on, on the war and how is it to be in the war as a woman. Uh, and how is uh, what, what it? I mean, how how do you become an anti-fascist fighter? This was something very important for me. Uh, that's why this first part of the story, maybe for me, it's the most interesting part because you really get to know how people get politicized. What are the motivations behind this? Um, what does it mean to to become a partisan anti-fascist fighter? So yeah, I was um, I mean together also with Anna. Um, very much interested in, in these questions. Maybe Valentin would like to react as well? Yeah, well, well, yeah, hello, hello to you all. Uh, yeah, you, you, you talked about um, Anna, who is uh, credited uh, not as director but as uh, writing on dramaturgy. And um, so, what, uh, what was your, your relationship with her? Uh, well, well, how, how did you actually work? Uh, with her on, on this movie, Martha? Um, yeah, I met her because she's a grand aunt of uh, my uh, partner, Anna, who is a co-writer of the film. Uh, so I met her uh, already in 2006 um, because, um, uh, of course, because I knew about her story. Anna and I back then were very active at the um, uh, independent, cultural, artistic and politically leftist scene. So there was a lot of, um, I mean, um, ideas that activists in how to self-organize. So uh, we thought that uh, Sonia's story is very relevant for also our experience, not directly, not literally, but as an inspiration. And um, and when, when I met her first time, uh, she, uh, I mean, I wanted I wanted her to tell me part of her story. 
and it was um, really stunning for me to get to know how um, wonderful storyteller she is. Uh, Sonia, Sonia actually um, um, uh, studied literature, so <laughs> she's very eloquent. But I also think that uh, uh, the way she speaks and uh, the way she remembers, it's uh, for me, it was like a reading a film script. And that's why uh, immediately the idea to make a film came um, uh, into, uh, into this whole uh, situation. And basically, my, um, um, uh, my first impulse was to make a film and also to come back with a camera next time when I meet her because I didn't want to lose this um, uh, interaction that she, I'm new to her, so she's telling me this story for the first time. Uh, and um, I think there is a lot of also uh, value in that, uh, in terms of, I mean, the way story is told. So basically in this, already in 2006, seven uh, and eight, um, we started, Anna and I, to come to, I mean, to visit Sonia and to record her story on different occasions uh, and also different versions of the story. Okay, okay. And that's basically, a, not, I would not say a story, who, but a storyteller who wants to talk about the story. You know, it's, it's not a story that you have to reach you have to get out from someone is more than a story that basically wants to be to be told by someone who wants to be to share, who want to, to share this particular area of time. You know? Yes, I, I think uh, for her, um, her story was very important to her. Uh, I mean, that is, um, I mean, out there also, especially in Serbia back in uh, 2000s, uh, it was, I mean, also very much anti-socialist, anti-communist context. Many people who were part of the uh, national liberation struggle uh, during the Second World War were completely marginalized. I think they were kind of also, I mean, quite surprised what happened <laughs> with this world and with the society we live in because it became very nationalist and the right wing. Uh, also, we had these processes of um, uh, introducing new laws, uh, which uh, uh, rehab rehabilitated a lot of uh, uh, people who collaborated with Nazis uh, during the Second World War. And I think this was uh, this all this was very difficult for this generation of anti-fascist fighters, which Sonia belongs to. Um, they were also the ones who uh, uh, very much advocated against the uh, 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 civil war in Yugoslavia. They, they knew what the war means and they, they were very actively um, uh, engaged against, uh, uh, against this. Uh, so I think for her, yeah, it was very important to, to, to tell her story. Uh, it, to transfer it and because I can maybe say that uh, this project, uh, I mean, it lasted more than 10 years uh, on a low intensity uh, uh, scale, uh, but um, there there is a very intensive part when we met each other and then there is also a very intensive part of the filmmaking actually in the last few years before she uh, left us because at some point in 2016, 17, I, I really literally woke up one morning and I said to myself, okay, uh, you need to make this film, uh, you need to finish this film. And um, uh, also I think her story be is becoming more and more relevant every day with the rise of fascism and right-wing right populism in Europe and, and wider. So basically in this last phase, um, I think um, also she knew me already very well. Uh, she trusted me and um, um, she, she really, in a way, in a very gentle way, handed her story to, to, to us, to this new generation. And it was very important for her because I remember also our interaction after, um, after we finished the shooting. So it was very... Um, somehow emotional and uh, important for all of us. And could you tell us something about uh, her position or her profession during the socialist period? 
Uh, yes, uh, she uh, after the uh, yeah uh, after the war. Uh, and uh, after she came back from Auschwitz, because also it took some time for her to come back, because it was not that easy <laughs> to to travel like uh, like some years ago. Um, and uh, so she uh, she actually uh, she didn't want. I mean, she finished. Uh, she studied literature, um, and um, but she didn't want to become a professor and work with students because she thought. I mean, that she's not ready for such an intense interaction. So she became. Um, she was a librarian at the university library. Uh, she still be, uh, stayed very active um, as uh, somebody who uh, who was part of Subnor, which is um, uh, how to translate this. The veteran this. association. Hmm? The veteran yes. association. Yes, yes. yes. Um, so, um, yeah, she wanted to preserve uh, the memory of... Um, uh, those also who ended up in Auschwitz and uh, who um, uh, uh, survived uh, and those who <laughs> didn't survive, un unfortunately, um, also for her. I mean, there was al always this question um, around people who came back from the camps such as Auschwitz, how did they survive? Uh, so there was this, this question, in a way, hovering <laughs> over uh, uh, around them, and um, uh, she wanted to preserve this memory how Yugoslav uh, women were uh, very much, um, um, yeah, part of the resistance. Not uh, uh, they did not collaborate with Nazis, and she was very proud of that suspicion that uh, uh, those who survived, in a way, somehow collaborated, must have collaborated. Dana. Um, yes, could you explain us why you wanted to superimpose different landscapes and to make them metamorphose into one another by the use of cross-fading? Mm. Uh, yes, um, I mean, this idea came from uh, actually um, uh, my discussion with the dramaturg Anna Vujanovic because uh, uh, she was working on the concept of landscape dramaturgy. And uh, then this question, a kind of political question, arise from our uh, exchange. And this is how you can inhabit a landscape with different gazes at the same time. So basically, I was um, I was thinking about this problem and how to solve this problem cinematically. And then actually, um, I mean, in a way, I don't. I mean, yeah, technically they're like. Uh, um, Crossfades, but I saw, I see them more as um, uh, that camera camera gaze is observing a, a specific spot in the landscape, um, but the, yeah, <clears throat> at the same time, and they exist like these different perspectives. So this question of a perspective um, is present in this uh, um, methodology. Um, so basically, we see these different perspectives in the same time. And we also through them uh, through this process kind of move through the through the landscape. So this was the idea behind it. Uh, um, and also, I mean, there is a concrete reference, historical art, historical references uh, uh, to the socialist art um, of uh, Sonia's time, and this, that is uh, constructivism and cubism. So I wanted to, in a way, to make um, cubist. Um, uh, cinematic landscape because of course we have a cubist landscapes in in visual arts uh, but uh, as I know we don't have them in cinema so um, so I wanted in a way to to work with the uh, landscape cinema paradigm and uh, propose something uh, I knew maybe Valentin has also a question yeah yeah sure you just um talk about this this landscapes on cross fades and um, I have the feeling that the war film itself is light cross faded I would say between the two uh, songs uh, we uh, which framed the movie I talk about uh, the first uh, red puppies on the last one at the end um, how song because uh, even if uh, both are kind of 
partisan sound, uh, more than Kedov actually. Uh, the first one is mm, quite gentle, the second one more uh, about bravery and the combat. Um, as the movie, because there is this very long uh, landscapes, quiet, quite um, immobile, and the violent discourse of Sonia talking about how to kill a Nazi. So, could you maybe tell us a little more about these two songs? How did you met them? How did you choose them? Mm. Um, yes, the first song uh, is uh, uh, with a, a red poppy song. Uh, is actually uh, it's not a partisan song. It's a song, a socialist song before. Or so it's it's a song that was made uh, between the first and the second world war, um, and then we have uh, like very much partisan song which is called our song. Um, and the first one, maybe for me, it was, um, I mean, what is important, the, the first, so uh, first song is not, um, it, um, uh, it's not the original uh, interpretation that we have in the film. So in, the interpretation of this song is done by uh, Les Bor, which is a, a queer uh, anti-fascist choir from Zagreb. So they, they, they did a new version, they uh, recorded it as well. Uh, and I thought that exactly this version gives a kind of a good uh, entry point uh, to the film because thematically, I mean, it's um, opening um, uh, the space <laughs> for us to think about uh, these ideas, but also uh, kind of rhythmically, it's more, uh, it's more, um, striking and somehow um, it's shorter and so on. Um, and then, of course, the the, la the the last song for me it's uh, it's a, it's a, it's the original version. But um, when you put it there in that place, um, also with the with the fields of um, I mean young wheat, which refers to the first song, <laughs> because uh, yeah, uh, the wheat. Uh, I mean, the first song is about. Um, yeah, the blood uh, that is spilled in the, um, you know, uh, in the war. Um, um, then actually the second one is um, about, yeah, what is, what does it mean to be an anti-fascist in a way? And how, it, for me, it's also inviting. It's uh, inviting in combination, I mean, the song, uh, the, the, the field, uh, uh, young wheat field, and uh, also the drawing that we have after this, I mean, during the song, but after the, um, uh, the, the, the images of the wheat field, um, I somehow uh, wanted to evoke this invitation for us to become partisans and anti-fascists. Uh, I didn't want to think about uh, a partisan as, a, as just as a historical notion. I think we need to be partisans today as well, but we need to be politically educated to understand what does it mean today. Um, also to understand our social and political reality in order to recognize fascism, because fascism doesn't look um, I mean, the same as in the 1930s, but definitely the principles are the same and we can recognize them, uh, especially if we know history. <laughs> but so. uh, here as a historian, I have a, a question to you because in your film, you are defining yourself more or less as a new generation of partisans. And uh, for the <laughs> partisans, the two important uh, strategic moves uh, for the Yugoslav communists was first to take arms, to uh, mm -hmm. wage uh, armed struggle, and the second move was to turn to the countryside, to, to get related with the peasantry. Do you mm -hmm. think that we today have to take arms and turn to the peasantry? I mean, um, maybe for the start, I mean, we can think about, I mean, that resistance is always possible. I think one of the main ideas behind this film is to evoke this um, feeling that resistance is always possible. Uh, also, that solidarity and self-organization uh, are very important and um, that they are also partisan strategies, uh, not just taking arms. I mean, of course, if we need to take arms at some point, we need to take arms and we need to be aware that this is the moment to take uh, take the arms. 
but um, maybe there are some steps before, I mean, like also for the partisans in Yugoslavia, there were steps before, as I said, Sonia became, became a communist and entered the, the, uh, the um, organization um, uh, much before, I mean, not much before because she was very young, but uh, before the war. And um, um, yeah, I think it's, um, um, it's important to think in these terms, like what does it mean to be a partisan today? In what kind of society we live? Of course, we share also with Sonia. She lived in a, a capitalist uh, society in King, Kingdom of Yugoslavia, which was very cruel society where more than 90% of people were illiterate. Um, I mean, really living beyond any, um, I mean, today, uh, not any, but um, how you say this in English, like, um, um, I mean, very, very poorly. So it was a very uh, class segregated society. Uh, and even Sonia was part of the, uh, of the privileged uh, uh, um, family, let's say. Um, she understood that the society itself is uh, actually based on inequality. So I think, I mean, it, partisan, it, uh, for me, being a partisan doesn't mean just taking arms, arms and going to the woods. Uh, it's, uh, it means uh, um, actively being an active citizen in understanding your socio-political context, recognizing new fascisms and resisting them. So um, this is um, for me what I mean when I say, okay, we are uh, uh, partisans of today. And of course, these people who are doing this, when the time comes, they will maybe also take the arms and fight um, uh, others who are violent. <laughs> I mean, this was a different, really, historical context. I mean, there were people occupying the country. Today, it's much uh, maybe more complex because the enemy is spread out <laughs> and we have a kind of global uh, society. So it's, uh, yeah, um, it takes more, um, um, yeah, more, more self-organization, more solidarity and... Um, uh, um, more thinking about uh, how to actually uh, resist. But who will play the role of the peasantry? We worker. I mean, we have peasantry now. I mean, it's not just about peasantry. I think we as uh, uh, contemporary subjects, we need to understand that we are workers. Uh, you know, I think uh, somehow um, capitalism let us um, believe that we are not workers, that we are something special. But I think the point is to understand that we are workers and that also our workers' rights are uh, greatly endangered, especially in Serbia where, you know, like after socialism and this um, post-socialist transition, now people don't have uh, almost any rights and uh, big corporations from Germany um, or France, or uh, but Germany, I know for sure, are coming to Serbia, and uh, Serbia is one of the countries on the list of the uh, like cheap labor countries, and literally people don't have a right to go to toilet when working in a factory anymore. So this is uh, you know something that we uh, need to understand and think about. It's very important that we also politicize those people. Um, uh, to understand that this is not uh, uh, normal, that um, we should not accept such a conditions, you know. So, uh, and of course we have peasantry as well. I mean, and I think leftist movement in Serbia is connected to um, also to the peasants and to the workers uh, today as well. I don't know about the France because I don't know the context, but at least in our context, there is this um, gesture of... Um, trying to uh, organize um, um, like a larger front, uh, which is also intersectional. Yes. Um, did Sonia's story um, enrich or change your own way of thinking and practicing political commitment and resistance? Yes, definitely. Um, I think uh, because, as I said at the beginning, uh, I mean, I lived in Serbia when I met Sonia, uh, and I was active there at the um, leftist political scene, but more connected to the um, 
cultural artistic context. Uh, then I left, and in a way, I I, uh, I left to to Berlin to study experimental film, and I in a way left uh, left my context and lost my context. So how to how do you? I mean, then I am not anymore a, a, a cultural worker. The the work, um, I mean, a person who intervenes in their own context uh, as as a cultural worker. So, um, I mean, this had uh, good and bad sides. A good side is that you can concentrate on your work and uh, research and uh, make films. Uh, but uh, while in Serbia back then, we were constantly, you know, engaged in building infrastructure for uh, those who doesn't want to be a part of the corrupted institutions. So some kind of alternative institutions. Um, and it really took a lot of energy and uh, a lot of uh, struggle and energy. And um, uh, also because in Serbia, there is something which we call internally partocracy. It means that you can build, 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 but then there is another, you know, government and everything is destroyed uh, and you need to build again from, from the scratch. So I got also tired of this a bit. Um, and then um, uh, during my Berlin years, uh, I um, uh, concentrated more on, a wor uh, on my work and research and filmmaking. But then actually um, in the last few years, while making this film, um, I, um, I was very much inspired by Sonia to, to get, uh, I mean, more politically engaged now. So um, even, even I still live, I mean, between Belgrade and Be uh, Berlin. So uh, what is happening now in Serbia is that for the first time, there is a, a leftist party entering the mainstream political scene. And um, uh, I also got involved with, uh, with this. Um, and I think it's extremely important because we, we have a really like um, tabuization of socialist ideas for, for now, um, like two, three decades. So uh, I think this is very important to uh, uh, think uh, and um, mm, also inspired by Sonia and her story, I uh, very much got involved and uh, plan to continue in this way, so. Valentin, do you have some question? Yeah, yeah sure, yeah, sure. Well, you, you, we, we, you just talk about, yeah, how the, the movie uh, brings uh, bring you to a, a broader, yeah, sense of political uh, uh, fight and engagement, and uh, your, your movie itself is part of a broader of a broader project, uh, which name is uh, Landscapes of Revolution. If uh, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, can you can you talk us about uh, oh, about this project, please? Yes, uh, this is uh, because I, as an artist, um, I am, and I say also researcher, but artistic researcher. Um, I don't produce art, uh, I mean, artistic objects. Uh, I always think about um, uh, art also as a, as a practice uh, where you, you know, like show something and then you discuss something like we are doing uh, today. Also with my previous film, Yugoslavia, How Ideology Moved Our Collective Body. I, I felt really a need to travel with the film and discuss it. For example, when we showed the film in Paris, in MKADU, uh, it was really interesting because the discussion after the film was longer than the film itself. And I really appreciated this, even it was very heated discussion. Um, so, um, yeah, so I work in the framework of theoretical artistic research. Um, I often collaborate almost always uh, within, <clears throat> uh, within this research is I co uh, collaborate with Anna Vujanovic, who is a, uh, theorist uh, and uh, perform performance uh, art scholar uh, and also dramaturg and um, yeah, co-writer of this film. Uh, so um, uh, so this, uh, this project, Landscapes of uh, uh, Revolution, is our research project uh, through which we, we already made another um, um, theater cinematic installation, performance installation called Freedom Landscapes. So basically what we were interested in is this uh, womanly side of the war. So we uh, collected uh, testimonies, memories um, uh, of uh, female uh, anti-fascist fighters from the uh, territory of former Yugoslavia. And then we tried to activate them today in a way that we 
um, place them, place these stories into the new bodies, you know, uh, with different uh, means. But um, in the performance, it's even more, uh, I mean, it's uh, clearly more possible because uh, uh, some some different people are telling you these stories, not not the not like Sonia who experienced this story and she's saying uh, um, her story to us. Uh, in the performance, we work with this idea how the stories of these different women are actually um, being uh, said by other people, by different generation, by by the new bodies, uh, and um, yeah. Uh, this is the main uh, main concern of this uh, research: is collecting these uh, testimonies and memories of uh, female anti-fascist fighter uh, uh, fighters from from former Yugoslavia. Okay. Um, but I think too about um, the multiplicity of media forms um, in uh, landscapes of resistance. I mean, there is um, it's um, DV images, if I'm right. Um, I would say classical, classical, uh, classical, uh, numerical, uh, digital film. There is um, on writing. There is um, drawing too. So, is this a way too to articulate um, different shape of thought? I would say, as you do in mm -hmm. making different art forms, such as. A performance on movies for this mm. for the idea of resistance. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in the, I mean, I am interested in a, a affective side of art and how we can, uh, you know, uh, have a knowledge production or a transfer um, through this affective uh, um, power of art in a way. Um, so, yes, definitely. I mean, performance is important for me. I'm a filmmaker by education and profession. I was met for many years by part of the uh, collective of artists and uh, theorists uh, who dominantly worked in the, in the actually field of performing arts. So performance is something close to me in this way because I had, uh, uh, for many years, collaborative practice uh, um, in the field of performing arts. Um, so yeah, I, I'm interested in these different ways of uh, producing and transferring uh, 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 knowledge uh, and uh, yeah, storytelling as well. But did I answer your question? Sorry if I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my main question was about how did you articulate this different media forms um, in your movie, like the drawings? Uh -huh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the drawings, for example, it's uh, they're not my drawings. The, those drawings are, or, or somebody from, I mean, from the, <laughs> from the team. Uh, actually, these drawings are also kind of um, historical documents in a way. Uh, the, it's um, uh, these are drawings of um, actually one uh, very famous. Uh, uh, partisan artist, uh, visual artist, um, uh, Pivo Karamatijevic. Uh, he actually um, did the kind of visual diary of uh, everyday life of partisans during the war. And my idea with these drawings was actually to, to inscribe also more bodies in these landscapes, more bodies than Sonia's, that, Son that exist in Sonia's story. So uh, even like some other bodies that are not mentioned in the story to inscribe them in these landscapes because they maybe passed through these exact spots, but maybe also some they passed through some similar similar um, uh, landscapes and uh, uh, woods. So this was the idea uh, because I think what is for me as well very much uh, important in Sonia's story is she she doesn't see herself as a hero. Uh, she she's very um, in a way anti-heroic, and um, uh, also part of this because she always mentions that everything she did is part it was part of the larger organization self-organization. She joined the struggle, so she always tends to to mention all her like comrades and friends. And um, uh, for her, it was very important how people related to each other during the war. I mean, I think for her. 
this was also part of the communist ideology. How do you uh, relate to each other in the in such uh, harsh times, uh, like for example, being in Auschwitz, you know, or this kind of how do you treat your human uh, comrades uh, in a state of exep exception situation. So for her, this was also part of the communist ideology. And I think it's quite clear. I mean, if you yeah, see it from this perspective, mm -hmm. from her story. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, do you see your film as a tribute to Sonia and as a way to perpetuate her memory, or do you conceive your documentary differently? Um, I mean, I'm glad if people perceive, uh, perceive it as a tribute to Sonia, but on the other hand, this was not my idea, uh, my main idea. Uh, also, we see that in the film, um, Sonia dies at some point, by, by, but her story continues. So for me, actually, um, I mean, her story is, for me, very inspiring, but it's larger than her. And I think she's also aware uh, aware of this, and maybe also she uh, transferred this to me. But because it's a not char uh, classical character-driven documentary, this is uh, this is for sure that this is not. Uh, uh, um, we have a st strong character in the film, um, like a main character. But on the other hand, I, I think um, it's it's not a, a character-driven documentary. But um, in spite of what you were um, just saying, there is a, a huge difference between this film and your former film. Because in your former, in your previous film, you were interested in the collective body, and you were criticizing the contemporary global individualism. And in this new film, you are focusing on an individual. So does it mean that you have become more individual, individualist in the meantime? No, thank you for the question. Actually, I think these two films, they appear different, but they are, uh, for me, kind of complementary. Because, uh, you know, uh, okay, maybe the previous film has dramaturgically more experimental approach that we really, uh, I mean, for cinema, let's say, for, for narrative cinema. Uh, that we really start from a, from a macro pers macro political perspective, and then uh, in this film we come to the bodies of the narrators, which is uh, again a kind of construction of me, Anna, and the editor of the film, Natasha Damjanovic. While in this film there is a more um, a, a kind of cla a more classical dramaturgical gesture, uh, uh, where you start from one body. Uh, and one experience to tell a story about society, you know. Uh, uh, so it's a more in this in the new film. It's actually more classical dramaturgical approach that you um, start start from a particular uh, story in order to get to the larger uh, uh, picture of, of a society. So, uh, but no, I, I didn't become a more individualistic. Uh, but I thought uh, that. Um, in this way, I mean, because also how we chose uh, uh, fragments of her story um, and um, this idea um, uh, also that came from understanding how she's, what kind of storyteller she is, that she produces what we call verbal images or, or scenes of memory. Uh, and how these scenes of memory are very rich. And as I already mentioned, they, they also are populated by other bodies and other actors in the story. Um, I think this is very important that she places herself um, in the uh, constellation of other uh, contributions, bodies and uh, uh, and actually uh, uh, the whole movement because party, it was a partisan movement. Um, during the Second World War in, in Yugoslavia. Are there other questions? Yeah, there's one. So, um, what's on, on what are you working now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm uh, because uh, yeah, 
Um, I'm working on something which is in between these two films. Um, actually, I'm working on um, uh, on a film which uh, deals with the last uh, last slat or last uh, mass performance uh, of uh, uh, for Youth Day. So um, I don't know if you know my previous film, but I was dealing with this. Um, um, oh, I hear myself. Um, uh, the film was dealing with the question of how ideology of former Yugoslavia uh, was performed in public space through these mass performances uh, uh, where uh, people gathered for the youth day to perform, uh, to, to create this collective body and actually rehearse uh, revolutionary socialist ideas. But it was also very much about institutionalized ideology back then. So what I'm interested in now in the new new film that I'm still developing uh, is um, um, actually this shift from ideology of collectivism toward individualism. Because in the last slat, this ma how we call this mass performance, uh, we have for the first time uh, a solo dancer. Our I, I like to say that she's our Pina Bausch, um, Sonia Bukicevic is a professional uh, ballerina and modern modern dancer. And she dances uh, alone, but actually in the same time with 9,000 other people. Uh, but how the how this dance is composed, and you can see a fragment of it in the in the film in the in the first uh, my first feature. Documentary um, is actually like it's a it's a solo dance of gigantic proportions. So I'm interested in, in this moment of history when you know um, also this collective body started to turn into uh, individual body or individualist ideology. Or I mean, socialist collective body was in the same time shifting toward national collective body but also toward the individualism. And I think this moment uh, was very important because it shows visually uh, what happened. That's why I was also interested in, in the slides because they visually, graphically show certain uh, political economic influences that Yugoslavia had over the course of its history. Okay, fine. Yeah, the new film is called uh, by na for now the body in plural. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I wish you good luck for for this. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Mata, for all your very interesting answers. Thank and you. Uh, we will have now a conclusion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Eh bien, merci infiniment euh, à tous les quatre pour cette euh, très belle discussion autour de Landscapes of Resistance. Et chers publics, euh, à très bientôt pour un autre débat. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. That's a wrap. Thank, yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Goodbye. So